Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's great to be back with you again for our weekly chat, this time on, on Wednesday, the day before uh, the Thanksgiving holiday. Hoping that you're all well, staying safe, and taking the time, of course, to be family. Even though the powers that be do not want us to come together on Thanksgiving, we can still be family. Let's begin with our prayer to the Holy Spirit, O Heavenly King. O Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who are everywhere and fillest all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O Good One. This morning, we want to offer some thoughts about the Thanksgiving holiday that we celebrate tomorrow here in our country and what our Holy Orthodox faith says about Thanksgiving in particular, especially in the context of the Holy Liturgy, as well as what it means to live a spiritually thankful life. So stay tuned. As always in our podcasts, if you do have any comments or questions, please list them in the appropriate section, and I promise to do my best to get to them. Okay, so let's begin with some opening thoughts, and I want to use uh, the late Father Thomas Hopko's wonderful four-volume series on the Orthodox faith. This is volume four on spirituality. Listen to what he says about Gratitude and being thankful. The spiritual person is the one who is grateful for everything in life. He is the one who receives everything with thanksgiving and who knows that he has nothing except what is received from God. In the Gospel of John, it says, And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. In the Old Testament, <clears throat> Excuse me. In the Old Testament, thanksgiving was central in the life of God's people. The temple liturgy offered sacrifices of thanksgiving and praise, and psalms sang continually of thanksgiving to God. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to thy name, O Most High, to declare thy steadfast love in the morning and thy faithfulness by night. O we'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, for his mercy endures forever. And of course, it's from the Psalms. In the New Testament, thanksgiving is the very essence of the church's life. The word Eucharist means thanksgiving. And the very center of the church's liturgical worship of God is when, in remembrance of all his saving acts in Christ, the people lift up their hearts and give thanks unto the Lord. The apostolic scriptures and the lives of the saints abound with thanksgiving to God for all things. Quoting from Ephesians now, Let there be no filthiness, nor silly talk, nor levity, which are not fitting, but instead let there be thanksgiving, always and for everything, giving thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. St. Paul continues in Thessalonians, Rejoice always, pray constantly, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And then again in Philippians, St. Paul writes, Rejoice always in the Lord. Again I say rejoice. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, what are we to make of this? The spiritual person has thanksgiving and gratitude in all circumstances, and everything and for everything. This thanksgiving is rooted in the firm conviction. Let me rephrase that. This thanksgiving should be rooted in the firm conviction of God's merciful providence and care in all things, in the steadfast faith that, quote, God works in everything for good with those who love him, end of quote. Or as the passage may also be rendered from Romans, everything works together for good with those who love God. 
Okay, let's let's pause just for a second, and I'll, I'll come back to this. But I, I think one of the things that we struggle with in life is the the understanding, or maybe not understanding, how the the Orthodox faith expects us to be thankful when life's situations don't necessarily merit being thankful, right? I mean, how can you be thankful when a loved one is is sick or or hospitalized uh, or suffers some trauma or tragedy? And, and I think it goes into the deeper context of what is it that we expect from God? There was a book written back, forgive me, I, I think it was in the late 70s, early 80s, called I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. A wonderful little book written by a, a, a secular author, but it basically said that life is not a bowl of cherries, that life can be a struggle, and the only way to overcome that struggle is to find within yourself the ability to make sense of the struggle and what the goal is in coming out of the struggle. Now, in the context of Thanksgiving, and especially now as we celebrate the holiday tomorrow, um, we need to pause and reflect both individually and as family, but also as church communities, what it is that we are called to be thankful for. And that takes both discipline, it also takes a certain amount of, of prayerful meditation, but it also takes faith. It takes that ability within ourselves to, to look at what's going on around us and to say, Lord, pretty sure you're involved in all this, but help me here. Or as the epileptic father, the father who, or the child, the epileptic who said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief, right? So the idea of, of being thankful just cuts across the whole board of, of our living situations. And, you know, going back to Father Hopko's book, as he makes reference to St. John Chrysostom, who's very strict on the teaching of Thanksgiving. Because he says, the spiritual man or woman does not thank God only for what he considers to be good in life. Rather, he thanks God for everything, even for what appears to be bad in life, knowing that God's tender care is over all, and that the evil in this world, and we know there is evil in the world, which is always present and inevitable, can itself be the vehicle for our spiritual growth and our salvation, if rightly understood and overcome by God's grace. Let me get back, let me repeat that for a second. We are to be, St. John says, we are to be thankful for even the bad and the evil in this world. Because it, it, in, in itself, it can be a vehicle for our growth spiritually and our salvation. If we truly understand and are able to be overcome by God's grace with that practicing of, of discipline and, and prayer and faith. Of course, the opposite of gratitude and thanksgiving is bitterness and complaining. It is bemoaning one's lot in life because of pride and covetousness. It is caused by the absence of humble trust in the Lord. It is rooted in an attitude of life which does not allow the person to exclaim with the righteous Job. And Job says quoting now from the scripture, <clears throat> Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter 1 from Job, verse 21. So, to thank God in everything, and for everything, is the result of faith and faithfulness in God. It is a result of absolute trust in the Lord, who knows best what we need for our salvation. Again, he alone knows best what we need for our salvation. 
and does all that he can within the evil conditions of the world to bring us to eternal life, to peace and to joy. It is the product of believing. Now, as I, as I shared that with you, you know, I just thought about this. He will, God will do all he can within the evil conditions of the world to bring us to eternal life, to peace and to joy. We have to cooperate with God's love and grace. God doesn't mag magically zap us to change us into being thanksgiving and thankful people. We have to cooperate with that grace. And how do we cooperate? How do we really, really allow God and His grace to take over in our lives? First of all, Again, it takes spiritual discipline. Every day, we should be reading Holy Scriptures. Every day, we should be in front of our icon corners praying. Every day, we should be looking at ourselves and doing a self-evaluation. How can I be a better Christian? Every day, we should be looking to manifest our faith in God by helping others. And forgive me, but the excuse of life is too complicated, life is too busy, are just that, excuses. Every day, we have to literally get out of God's way and with faith, allow Him to work through us. Allow Him to bring us to that condition spiritually of contentment and peace and joy, which leads us to live a life of thanksgiving. Okay, um, I want to read just a couple of, of thoughts as we continue. These are from the, uh, some of the Psalms, just to show you <clears throat> how thankful scriptures can, can help us to be. Psalm 25, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. In this context, the Lord gives us more than we'll ever know for which we should be thankful. If we center our hearts and minds in the Lord God, we will always be thankful. Every moment of every day, we have reasons to thank the Lord God for our lives. Each breath and each thought are reasons to give thanksgiving to the Lord God. Wow. Think about that. Psalm 49. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Being able to see, to hear, to feel, and touch others are a basis for joyful thanksgiving. The freedom to learn and to worship in God's holy church inspires thanksgiving in us. Receiving the precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ calls us to endless thanksgiving. We have reason to always be thankful to God for his constant nourishment of our souls. We just have to take advantage of it. We, we would be ungrateful if we did not thank God for the ability we have to pray every day. Psalm 68. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Our thoughts and our voices are means to offer thanksgiving to the Lord God. Singing in God's holy church beautifies expressions of our collective thanksgiving. The love of God expressed in acts of thanksgiving to God and to our neighbor. Daily thanksgiving to God and joy and peace and life are inseparable experiences for us. We can never repay God for all he's given to us. We can certainly show our gratefulness and our gratitude. Um, so let me wrap it up. So I know it's getting to that time. These are some questions I believe we should ask ourselves as we approach Thanksgiving tomorrow. And I would hope that you would all seriously take these into consideration. I'm going to pause between each one to allow you to actually write them down. Because I think it's really important. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm so old-fashioned, you can actually just replay the, the video at the, at the end, right? My bad. But here are the questions we should ask ourselves as we enter into the day of Thanksgiving. First of all, what am I truly thankful for in my life? 
many, many things come to mind. Right? What am I truly thankful for in my life? Secondly, am I only thankful for things or people in my life? Hmm. In other words, is my thankfulness directed at a certain person or thing? Am I only thankful for things or people in my life? Third, am I bitter or angry at God when my life takes on struggles or crises or trauma or stress, financial, health, family, whatever? That sense of bitterness or angriness towards, towards God. And lastly, regarding my Holy Orthodox faith, am I thankful for it? Do I take it for granted? And how do I show my Orthodox faith in my daily life? The overall answer should be rooted in faith in God, but it also be, should be rooted in how I treat my neighbor how I treat my family members, how I respect and honor myself. That's also a sign of, of being thankful. Okay? Um, so that's it for this pre-Thanksgiving holiday podcast. I uh, hope that this little get-together causes some reflection on your part. A willingness to be an Orthodox Christian who shows his or her thankfulness by living it in our daily lives. Okay? So, let's conclude, as usual, with our prayer to the Mother of God. <clears throat> Steadfast protectress of Christians, constant advocate before the Creator, not despise the cry of us sinners, but in your goodness come speedily to help those who call upon you in faith. Hasten to hear our petition and to intercede for us, O Theotokos. We always protect those who honor you. And let me uh, conclude with the singing of the Tropar for St. Nicholas the Wonder Worker, um, which is a preview of our one of our December podcasts. The true, the real Santa Claus. Thy work of justice did show to your faithful a canon of faith, the likeness of humility, a teacher of abstinence. O Father Bishop Nicholas, wherefore by humility you achieved exaltation and by meekness richness, intercede therefore with Christ our God to save our souls. Thank you, dear viewers. We love you. We're so glad that you took the time to be with us. Know that we always lift you up in prayer. We ask that you pray for us as well. Because in lifting one another up in prayer, we are truly united in Christ. Have a blessed Thanksgiving.